When a problem comes along, you must sniff it. When a good time turns around, you just sniff it. There is only one reason. And the rock means... One reason. Well, I guess two reasons. That I'm not wearing that million dollar belt behind me. And number one would be the avalanche over. We just missed that avalanche over by a hair. They had the empty net open and they weren't able to hit it. So we didn't get the avalanche over. And then the other, I'd say half reason is because the overtime giveth and the overtime taketh away. Just yesterday I told you if you win in overtime, consider yourself somewhat lucky. Well, the overtime taketh away from us on Monday with Dallas, but they surely giveth to us on Tuesday with both Detroit and Pittsburgh, which made for a clean sweep on everything but that avalanche total. It was maybe not a raker's delight, but it was a sniffer's paradise. And Lord knows I've been spending most my life living in a sniffer's paradise. And when I have nights like this, I check those comments and you guys say, oh, I love this guy, this guy's that, oh, who, uh, this guy's why. None of this, this guy, this guy, you guys sound like a Dagestani wrestler when they're talking about other uh, fighters. This guy, you know. No, 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 the champion has a name, and it's not Charles Oliveira, it's Andy Francis. And if you ever need to at me, hit the at button, start typing Andy, and you're going to see my mug, and then that will tag me in my channel, and I'll be able to see your comments. But more importantly, that's also my name on social media, at Andy Francis on all platforms. And... That takes me to a little mini announcement I got to make. When I get to that 10K followers on Instagram that I've been asking you guys to help me with, that's when I will make those sniff-related hoodies and t-shirts for you guys to buy because I've received your DMs. You said that you want them, but I'm sorry. There's the kid in me who went to New York City and when I was 12 years old and got scammed by some person selling fake IDs. That makes me think you're gonna say, oh, I'm gonna buy them, I'm gonna buy them, I'm gonna buy them, I'm gonna go do all this work, I'm gonna get them made, and then, all right, they're for sale, and oh, cool, it's sold a grand total of zero. So just know that I'm not making them until I get to 10,000, because that's like my little micro, I've asked that, see, like yesterday's video probably has 7,000 views. If each of those viewers were a follower, this would be done like that. But people come here, they want to get money, they want to leave, they want to do no favors. So I'm not going to do that until I hit 10K and we'll see when that happens. And you know what, just, and by the way, relax if you're waiting for the NHL picks, they're coming. Can I at least enjoy my opening monologue on a night where I, after a night where I made you buckets of cash? Speaking of which, how about we get to those? I'm gonna say something you're not gonna like, but before I say something you're not gonna like, I'm gonna tell you something you are gonna like, and that is DraftKings Sportsbook promotion. You bet $5 on anything. Any bet that you see on the slate tonight, you bet five on it, DraftKings Sportsbook will credit you with $200 in free bet credits if you're a new user and you are in a state where sports betting is legal. And you also gotta be 21, and if you tick in the middle of the night, it means you got a problem. Uh, I'm talking about ticking from gambling, not naturally related ticks. But if you're ticking from gambling, you have a problem and call 1-800-GAMBLER. Somebody will be there to answer your call and help you with that nightly tick. So looking at these Wednesday games, I'm going to say that thing that you hate to hear. I look at this slate and nothing jumps out at me in particular that I can say yes, that is my favorite. And if you're gonna even remotely complain, A, I don't even know what you're doing here, you should be enjoying the fruits of my sniff from last night. B, you clearly see when there are bets that I like, I tell you, like last night, I told you, my favorite two and then my bronze medal. Tonight, do you want me to just make it up so you lose? I'm gonna find some for you, but this isn't the level of Avalanche last night. This isn't the level of the over-under on the Minnesota Wild. and. Colorado, by the way, isn't it important to get that extra half goal? Yep, it is. And that might be a theme of what we're doing here tonight because I do like some totals, but I would really like them if there were an extra half on them. And we'll start with the first one, the New York Islanders versus the Ottawa Senators. The Islanders, believe it or not, they got both Palmieri and Adam Pellick back last game. And Palmieri was inserted into a line that had immediate chemistry and put two goals on the board. That was him. Brock Nelson and Anders Lee. They really generated a lot of chances, put two goals on the board. And I believe now that that might 
jolt the Isles offense a little bit. I'm looking at that over under of six. We've taken how many Ottawa overs? Have they ever even lost for us? We know they can concede. We know they can score. We know the Islanders gave up four breakaways last game. To me, this is a good recipe for an over. Now we, with Palmieri back on that second line, then you also have Barzal on another line. They're conceding chances. I think it's a good recipe for an over. And because there aren't many games that I really love on this particular Wednesday, I opened the door and found a couple props in that game. And the first being, Players from that line I just told you about. I like Brock Nelson to register over two and a half shots on goal. And then I'm going to take Anders Lee to register a point one more time. Once again, I, I, he, he had a couple last game. He's a pretty streaky guy. He goes to high danger areas, usually right in front of the net, plants his ass and, you know, tries to bang home some rebounds. Got one of those last game. So I'm going to take Lee to register a point and Brock Nelson to register over two and a half shots on goal in that particular game. Then another game I'm going to be looking at the total. We got Toronto and the Rangers. Last game, Toronto, they scored five. Last game, the Rangers, they scored six. Is this a game that can't reach an over? I understand, Shesterkin, you're always playing with fire, but the Leafs have that elite type of offensive talent and quality that you even saw during the playoffs last year. There, How many times did they score a bunch on Vasilevsky? And I don't think someone like Shesterkin really scares me that much. And maybe even if it does, maybe the Rangers can do what they did last game. They, they, they scored a ton on the Panthers. I think six is a good number in this one. Do I think maybe there's a good chance of a push? Yes, but you're gonna hold that thought just like I had you hold that thought yesterday. And maybe we can combine it with something else and shave a couple goals here and there to make a two game parlay. And he'll not lay a hand on those under the protection of parlay. <laughs> and what game could that be? The Carolina Dallas Stars game. And you're probably surprised I didn't open with that one, right? A couple of pointing Spider-Mans. We just took that Dallas under the other night. Dallas has conceded zero goals, zero goals, two goals against an offensive, I don't want to say juggernaut, but they're, the Buffalo Sabres have been looking great. And by the way, side note, the way the Sabres played Dallas. They took it to him for 60 minutes and it was, look, a couple of idiotic choices in their own end, which blew the lead for them, but they give slower teams serious problems. And I'm very interested to see how things go for the Sabres. I was thoroughly impressed with the Sabres these last couple of nights. So I'm going to reevaluate them, but you, you never know. I don't trust teams who don't play defense, but I was thoroughly impressed in their game versus Dallas. Anyway, going back to this Dallas-Carolina game, you have Carolina who lost Max Pacioretty. Now their power play will probably re-suffer as it did before he was inserted into the lineup. Yeah, this is a couple of, of, of teams where we should feel comfortable taking the under six. However, what I want to do... I'd rather bump this up to six and a half on the alternate lines and then bump either the Islanders or the Rangers down to over five and a half. There's one that you probably like more than the other. So you take the one you like. I'm not, don't get angry at me. I like either of them. Take either one that you like. You don't have faith in the Islanders, then take the Ranger game. So I like combining either of those over five and a halves with the Dallas Carolina under six and a half. And now going back to that Ranger Toronto game, I opened the door and I looked inside there too. What did I see? I saw John Tavares and I saw William uh, Nylander, two guys who are coming off a great game. They play together. They're both on the power play. They looked fantastic last game, and I'm looking for that to continue against the Rangers. This should be a good game. This should be somewhat of a playoff statement type of game. I think it should be high intensity. Uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs wet their New York beak with the Islanders and a nice big win. Now you got the Rangers coming into town. You know, I am tempted to take Toronto for sure, but the Rangers, you know, coming off a 6-2 win and... When that power play gets going, it's scary to mess with that. But this should be a very entertaining game tonight. I'm going to take the over five and a half, combining that with the under six and a half, two adjusted totals. And then I'm going to take over half of a point for both Nylander and Tavares in that game. Now, as far as those late games go, I smell a rat. I smell more rats. And I also, by the way, 
I think the Ottawa Senators are a rat. Don't see that Ottawa line and think, oh, I'm going to take them. The Islanders are garbage. I understand the Islanders are bad. Nobody understands that more than me. They've lost five in a row, but Ottawa's that type of team who can lose to absolutely anybody. The reinsertion of Palmieri into that lineup, into that line, it's breathed some new life into the team. As anybody who bet that Leafs Islanders game in the first period was like, uh oh, what am I in for tonight? So I wouldn't just bet the Senators to win. Same type of thing goes for the Oilers. I know the Oilers are on a nice win streak. We've taken them on this win streak. We we said they need to beat Seattle. They did. But man, this is a letdown spot. They don't have Kane in the lineup. I, I don't know exactly why he's going to be missing the game. Hopefully it's not related to the you know skate incident hopefully he's just some sort of you know short-term illness but he won't be in the lineup tonight and this is like a letdown spot and we know that they're capable of of blowing situ very winnable situations and also if you took calgary thinking that the blue jackets were just going to roll over and die you had to sweat that one out into overtime columbus is actually playing decent right now so i re really wouldn't mess with that too much if anything i would take the under six and a half in this one no cane let down spot Maybe this one ends three to two or something like that. Not a hundred percent certain, but it's a confusing one. Same thing. Don't you don't you bet on Seattle? Not after Vancouver fired their coach, won their game, which we predicted, and now they're playing the next night. You don't want any sort of newfound energy from this team who has a new coach that they're trying to impress. If anything, if you have a new coach that you're trying to impress and you have to give everything you have in a game, that makes me think you're going to be playing really hard. And if you're playing really hard. That usually equates to unders. That means both teams are grinding it out. And if I had to take one, imagine this, if I had to take a pick in that game, I would take the under in the Vancouver-Seattle game. But obviously I would prefer to stay away from those late two ones. And that's what I got for you here on this Wednesday, following the unbelievable Tuesday. You know, if you ain't a believer by now, you never will be. But just in case you aren't yet, you know what you should do. Subscribe to the Odd Shopper channel right now. Click that button. Engage with these videos. Click the notifications so that you can be in the middle of a classroom or something and hear, ding, sorry, I got to go to the bathroom. And then get your bets in when they're nice and fresh. <laughs> Only in places where sports betting is legal. And you, you have to be one of those college seniors who's over 21 or something like that. Um, but yeah, subscribe to the Odd Shopper channel. Follow me on social media at Andy Francis. Prove to me that... A, a guy who's asking for it can get to 10,000 and then you'll have that paraphernalia coming your way. Unless you didn't want it in the first place, you never had your car. I will see you guys tomorrow. Take it easy.